Hey guys, uh, welcome back to the channel. Yeah, so in this video, I'd like to talk about um, what is the Rickfield Scroder House? Hmm, yeah, who knows? <laughs> and then I'm just gonna list my four key points. My name is Martin Harmon and welcome to Martin Harmon Art TV. This channel is about sharing my journey as an artist and my passion for, for all things art. So you're welcome to join me on this crazy adventure. Um, so basically I'm a British artist based in the UK and I create abstract ceramic sculpture and 2D artworks inspired by um, Stonehenge and Stone Circles. Um, and all of it's basically driven by curiosity. So these are kind of some of my examples of my artworks here and the paintings in the background. This one's a new one. <laughs> yeah, so what can you expect to learn from this video? Uh, well, like the, like the title suggests, I really want to talk uh, a bit about, you know, uh, what this Reedfield Squalder house is. So I'm going to talk about uh, who designed it and when was it built and where is it located and you know what is important about this house and you know and then last time I'm just going to share my views um, about this house and my experience uh, from personally visiting this house and uh, seeing it in person and what I learned from it and what I think about it. So yeah, anyway, uh, let's get to it. Yeah, so firstly, I'd like to talk about who was um, this Reetfield Scrolder house uh, built for. I think that's how you pronounce it. Yeah, so from doing my research so far, um, I realised this house was built for a lady called Miss Trues uh, Scrolder and her three children. You can see the, the house, um, the front of the house on this website. Yeah, this is the main website from the organisation and I think they're a museum now. So Miss Trues Scrooder um, was born in... Devin Daventer in the east of the Netherlands in 1889 and she was originally married to a lawyer and yeah this is the uh, this is like a short biography about her and you can find this on um, on the main website of this house um, if you google it it'll be the the first website that kind of pops up in her mid-30s she became a widow and had to raise her children on her own who designed this house and when was it and when was it built and where is it located this house was designed um, by an architect and designer uh, called Garrett Wrightfield and he basically collaborated um, with uh, Truce, Miss Truce, uh, the owner of this house uh, to create uh, to create this house and the furniture inside it. Yeah, so you can find a little bit of information about him on their website. So he, you know, he created some furniture. He's he, one of his iconic furniture pieces is this uh, red and blue chair. You might have seen it before. It's a very kind of modernistic chair with simple lines, simple shapes, simple colors. Um, and and you can kind of see the connection between his furniture and and this this house. Yes, yeah, so I think it was designed in 1924 um, by Garrett Redfield. And the house itself is located in um, Utrecht in the Netherlands. 19 yeah so it's really interesting um yeah so this house was built in 1924 um you know and we're in yeah we're in year 21 now so you know so that's that's almost 100 years ago and, you know it's crazy to think this this house was almost built 100 years ago and it's still um and it's still pretty f and it's still very futuristic you know it looks like it's something uh that should be um 
you know living in the future not in the present if that makes any sense <laughs> because it's so it was so ahead of its time and what's interesting is that Truis and Gerrit became lovers and eventually decide to live together in this house and Gerrit Redfield uh, lived in this house towards the end of his life uh, because obviously um, Miss Truis um, she became a, win- a widow uh, I think in her mid 30s and um, so that, that's quite interesting so they were both kind of working together to design and create this house and they obviously bought um, they obviously created such a close relationship that they both became lovers and decided to live together um, in this house what is important about this house and so now I've come to my blog when I was studying I remember I got really interested in looking at the still the still <laughs> not too sure if that's pronounced right um but uh but basically like like i mentioned earlier this uh the still is um, basically translates to the style in dutch and it originated in the netherlands basically originally it was a name given to a magazine established in 1917 by the dutch painter and design and designer and writer Theo van Duisberg. Yeah, it was a new kind of emerging artistic style. And you had people like painters, probably recognise this painter, Piet Mondorain. You had sculptors and architects. Oh, and this is the famous um, red chair by the designer and architect uh, Garrett Redfield uh, that I mentioned previously. And so they, they were all kind of working under this banner of distill and you know that I, I think you know in a from a historical perspective they weren't really you know closely you know working together all the time but they were they were all creating uh works that um had these kind of um these artistic principles and ideas in mind and the ideas were all based on geometry you know simple lines and shapes and colors um like you can kind of see here, you know, using primary colours. And it was all about kind of breaking up form and deconstructing form. And here we go, here's the, here's the house. Um, yeah, so again, this was all taken from a blog post that I created, um, you know, I think a couple of years back or something. Um, but it is just really interesting. They had all these people working within this group. Um, and so basically this house was um designed uh with these kind of ideas in mind taken from the artistic movement to still and uh, i think that's what's really fascinating about this house is that it's the only house of its kind that really um uh that really translates these ideas from an artistic movement into something real into a real physical building yeah so obviously Garrett Redfield um built this house with uh these distill ideas in mind yeah and here are some other images um if you just google um the Redfield Squalder house and you find lots of other images as well um online so you can see like uh, some examples here of the inside of the house and the way they've used you know color on the floor and on the walls and um just to break up the space it's almost like entering like a, a 3d painting that's what's just really fascinating by this house is because you know look you look at someone like P- Piet Mondorin's paintings and then you look at this house and in, and then you look at Ger- uh, Garrett Garrett Wrightfield's uh, chair. Uh, I hope I, I pronounce his name right again. Um, but you know, you can see, you know, you can see the relationship between the paintings, the chair, the house. It's all working within these ideas of deconstruction shapes, uh, using primary colors uh, and lines just to really deconstruct and break up form. And um, it's really clever the way um, these kind of ideas have been used in this building um, and how, you know, painting, architecture and furniture have all come together as one um, one cohesive idea and it's all kind of relating to each other. 
Yeah, this is this is quite interesting. Um, I remember when I was, you know, when when I had the opportunity to go and visit this house, uh, they showed examples of pulling away some of the walls to reveal more of the space, and that was really interesting because you know it just highlighted how you know a relatively small house uh, could be uh, rearranged to be to create bigger spaces. Um, and then there's another example with the window. Yeah, like the windows as well could also be opened out um, to create an illusion of more space. Um, so so the, the kind of whole function of the house as well was really interesting how it all functioned um, because it wasn't just about the aesthetic, it was about how you know, you could open up windows to create more space. You can pull back walls to create more space and and close up walls to um, uh, create different spaces within the house. Um, and I think, you know, from doing my own research, people say that, you know, this house um, probably inspired the whole kind of modern modernism within architecture and design. Yeah, and then finally, um, you know, what are some of my views on this house and, you know, and my experience of it? Um, you know, I really recommend if you have the chance and when things um, get back to normal and it's safe to travel, I really recommend anyone who's interested in learning more about uh, Distill, um, this artistic movement from Holland, from the Netherlands, Um to really check out this house and then you'll probably get a better a better sense of what this movement was about and how it kind of influenced uh, architecture as well as um, painting and furniture um, but yeah it's an, it was really amazing to see um, and for me personally I just realized that this building is just so ahead of its time you know so that's what I find really fascinating about about this house is that it's just really experimental, you know, and it gets me thinking about uh, what the future still could be in terms of um, architectural living spaces and how, you know, art can influence architecture and then have a knock-on effect and influence the way people behave and um, interact and think about buildings and the kind of built environment. Um, yeah, it's just an example of how art and architecture can coexist um, to create an experience um, for people. And I think it showcases the, you know, the values of humans. You know, we, we, you know, as humans, we'll looking to innovate and you know constantly come up with new ideas new ways of living and i think this house kind of illustrates the potential of uh, new ways of living and it showcases a harmony of architectural space and color yeah so anyway um i really hope you've enjoyed this video and it's got you thinking about about this house and and maybe even um, got you thinking about oh you know could I travel there and see it in person um, hopefully when things get better um, when it's safe to travel um, but yeah I mean you know I, I think personally uh, it's a pretty interesting house to see it really gets it really got me thinking a lot about new ideas and uh, I'd highly recommend seeing it if you can. But yeah, I mean, what what do you think about this house? Um, it'd be interesting to know your comments. So feel free to leave a comment below um, just to see what your thoughts are. Yeah, and don't forget to like this video if you've enjoyed it. And, um, and feel free to subscribe to the channel to be notified about future videos. And if you like my content, you can also, uh, you're also more than welcome to join me on Patreon and uh, you'll receive exclusive content linked to some of these videos. Oh, and all the information that I've put in this video, I'll try and put some of the links uh, in the description below, especially um, the organization's um, website where you can actually you know, find more information about the house. And you might be able to purchase tickets from there. I'm, I'm not too sure. I didn't properly look into that. 
but um, you know you should definitely be able to find the directions about how to get there. So anyway, that's 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 a wrap. Um, you know, I really hope you've enjoyed this video, and um, yeah, looking forward to see you in the next video. Uh, so stay well and stay safe, and check that house out in real life if you can, if you want to. <laughs> <laughs> it's an eye opener um, if you like that kind of thing um, so anyway yeah take care of yourself and I'll see you next time bye bye